Hey, hello guys. This is Karthik from ExitAutomation.com, and this is part three of our PDD with Selenium and SpecFlow video series. And in this part, we're going to write our first behavioral-driven development code with Selenium and SpecFlow. So let's not waste our time and let's get started. This is the same project which we worked in part two of our video series. In part two, we added all the reference required for Selenium, SpecFlow and BDD. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to write a very, very simple code. So for that, I'm going to first delete this unit test one dot CS. So it's deleted. So what else? So the first and foremost thing you need to do is to add a feature file. So before adding a feature file, it's always a good practice to first create a folder called as features, right? And then the next very good practice is to create one more folder called steps to have all the step definitions in that. So I'm going to add our first feature. So for that, just go to add, hit new items and select the specflow feature files. So we can write a very, very simple code for Google search. So Google search dot feature. So this will add me a feature to my project. And here we can write our own feature file. So for the sake of time, I have already written the feature file. So I'm going to just copy paste it as simple as this. And here you can see my feature file. All right, super. And here, as you can see, the feature file is very simple. It's Google search and it says feature to test Google page search functionality. Here we'll test the auto search as well as navigation to search result. Great. And here, what else it says? We have two attributes added. One is smoke test, and another thing is add browser, which is nothing but Chrome. Which means we're going to run this test in the Chrome browser. So if I type add browser colon IE, then it's going to open me up the IE browser. So this is what is the power of our base class dot contrib dot live, which we added in last part of this video series. Right? Great. So what is the scenario? It's a pretty simple scenario. It says Google search for exit automation. Given I have navigated to the Google page and I see the Google page fully loaded. When I type search keyword as exit automation, so I have created a table for this. Again, if you don't understand what table is and how these things works, please go ahead and watch our previous videos of BDD and SpecFlow video playlist from execute automation channel. So I'm going to create a table here. Then I should see the result for keyword. Again, the keyword is nothing but execute automation, right? So this is a very, very simple scenario in our feature file. So what is next? We need to create our step definition file. Again, step definition file is not a separate file as like you do in Cucumber. It's normal .cs file. So again, just hit add and new item. And I'm going to create a class here. So the class, I'm going to call this as Google search steps dot CS. So this will add a class for me. And right now I have already written the codes for this as well. See as easy it is. So I'm just copy this code and I'm going to paste it right here. We'll just talk about this in just a minute. So before that, there are a lot of uh, namespace missing X errors. So just press control dot. This will bring me up this option. It says using open QA dot selenium to be added as a reference. So I'm going to add this and this guy using system dot configuration. All right. And since this is a step definition file and we have to say explicitly that, Hey, spec flow for this feature file, you have to take this dot CS file as the step definition. So what should we use? We have to bind this feature file with this step definition for binding as simple as this, just put an annotation here as binding and press control dot. This will bring me up using tech talk dot spec flow. Just add this and all of the attributes which are throwing in an error is now working fine, right? And there is one more error. It's browser dot current. What is this browser dot current and where is this coming from? Actually, this is coming from again our super cool base class dot contrib dot specflow dot selenium dot unit dot bindings. So only from this library, this guy is coming. Right? We talk about this browser dot current in more detail 
why we talk about this so but before that just add all the references and remove all this error and then we'll talk about this in greater detail right so just press control dot and you can see it brings me up this namespace to be added so base class dot contrib dot spec flow dot selenium dot union dot bindings i'm gonna add this as well and all there should have gone but what is this again ah yeah see this it says create dynamic instance you know where it is coming from it's coming from our assist dot dynamics so we need to add this as well so can we press control dot here no we can't so we should manually type this guy. So using TikTok dot specflow dot assist. All right. Now the error should have gone. Hmm. Why is it not going? Maybe we have not added the reference here. Oh, see, oh, man. All right. So let's first add this. So specflow dot assist. All right. So it has brought the specflow dot assist dot dynamics. So I'm going to install this. I thought it is already installed, but it's not somehow. All right, and it's asking me to regenerate the package.config. All right, let's close this. And now the error is gone. So all the exceptions is gone right now. So let us first understand what this code is all about. And now if we save this guy, now you should see this all these steps has been mapped to the step definition file of the feature with the step definition. Right, even if I right click and hit go to definition, this will bring me up to this particular method. All right, so what is the first feature? It says, given I have navigated to the Google page, right? So this method says browser.current. Okay, so what is this browser.current? Again, it is coming from base class.contrib.specflow.selenium.nunit.bindings.browser. Actually, this guy simply saying it is a iWeb driver and it has the current browser's property. And this will return you the current browser which you are executing. So the current browser is something which you have already specified in the feature file. Right? So that is what it is doing here. Right? And the, the rest is very same. Again, the navigate.go to URL is same. And here there is something called configuration manager dot app setting of selenium based URL. Okay, so what is this actually? So if you see closely this particular project, you have something called as app dot config. If you open this, here there is a key called selenium based URL and there is a value with some default value here. Right? And here we can navigate to the Google page, this guy. Right? So for doing that, I'm going to just copy this URL and I'm going to paste it right here. Right? So now our test will actually run using this configuration which we specified for that particular key. Right? And then what I'm doing is I'm setting the current driver, the iWeb driver, to this guy, browser.current from here. Right? All right. So this is the step one of the feature file and what is the step two and I see the Google page fully loaded right that's what is the intention so it says I'm just going to check here uh, it's just a dummy check here so what I'm doing is current, current driver dot find element of by dot name of Q which is nothing but this text box I'm searching whether this guy exists if this text box exists then I'm saying page is fully loaded right so it's just a dummy test just ignore this if it doesn't make any sense so just for our testing purpose, I'm just doing this way. And then there is something called when I type search keyword as execute automation. So I need to type in the text box, right? So let's go to the step definition. So here the parameter for this particular method is table, right? And I am using this create dynamic instance, which means it will dynamically get the column name of our table and then it store and pass that value keyword into this send keys of this particular text box right that's what it is doing here and then what I'm doing is then I should see the result for the keyword which means the URL which is displayed after typing the execute automation so once you type this execute automation you will have this particular link right great so this is what it will show so again I'm doing the same dynamic instance and I'm getting the keyword and then I'm verifying using this partial link text method which is available in the by. So if it is displayed then it is 
the control exists. If it doesn't display it, the control doesn't exist. So it's a very, very simple and straightforward code which we have written just to demonstrate and test how this thing works. Right? So how to execute this test? Again, it's so simple. We just build the solution. You will have your test displayed in your test explorer. Great. And now if I run this, surely it's going to throw me an error since I forgot to add the Chrome driver for my project. So if I run this, it's going to throw me an error. It says the Chrome driver.exe is missing. So what should we do? Again, go to add reference using manage NuGet package manager. And here, search for Chrome driver. All right, so it brought me up the Chrome driver. So just install this Chrome driver right now. And then it's installing into my project. Great. All right, right now the Chrome has been installed in your project. And now you can see that the Chrome driver.exe is listed in your project in the Solution Explorer. Great. So now we have everything ready. So let's try to run this and see if this really works or not. So for that, I'm going to first clean the solution and I'm going to build it. All right. And then open the test explorer. So now if I hit this run selector test, this should open me up my browser and it should perform the rest of operation. So it should open the browser, go to navigate to the Google, search for exit automation and it should get passed. Hmm, what is it error? So it says no such element exception, it's fine, but still in which step it has got the problem. So for that you can hit this output. Now we can see that what is this happened. So it, it navigated to the page, it performed the operation, so everything is done. But here there is an error, no such element. So no such element is an error which we throw from our step. Alright, so from this step it's actually throwing us an error. And that's what is listed in our output right here okay so it seems like it's a delay issue so this we, we can fix by adding a thread dot sleep it's the worst kind of coding that you can ever make in your code but still i'm doing it for the sake of time but later on we'll try to add a method for our project for handling the wait operation in the page so first System dot threading dot thread dot sleep. So I'm just going to add this method and I'm going to wait for two seconds. I'm going to save this and hopefully the test should get passed right now. All right, it opened the browser. Great. Now the test got passed. You see that? So all the steps has been passed right now. And the one, one of the most important point to note here is these steps are actually getting the value exactly that you are passing from your feature file, right? Tomorrow, let's say you're going to search for the keyword selenium. And similarly, you want to see whether the selenium is listed in the page. Just Then just change the words, keywords right here and then try to run the same test once again you can see that the test will still work you have incorporated a little bit data driven testing in your feature file already see it search for selenium and the test got passed wonderful so this is our very very simple code that you can write using behavioral driven development with selenium and techflow so I hope you have got a very clear idea of what this really does, right? So that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a very great day.